Do you believe in miracles? We got Fizzle in the house. Fizzle, what what's up, Fizzle? good, man? Fizzle, glad to have you here. Let's go. This the South Harmon Podcast. Glad you here today. Hit that Patreon link if you here to stay. Dynasty best ball, that's my favorite way. 40 chess trade show. Let's make a trade today or check an AMA. You know Adam at the ATM. Mike always in the building. He gon' stay with him. They gon' start every show off with their own trade. Fantasy's a big ocean, they made their own wave. Make sure you tap in there Tuesdays and Saturdays. Tuesday night, Saturday morning, ain't no better way. Hit that notification bell when the news break. Go subscribe right now, don't get the news late. Destination Devi, that's the team. Dynasty football, man, that's my favorite thing. I remember Biggie said it was all a dream. Now people watching on their phones and computer screens. Welcome to the team. Welcome back in everybody to another edition of the Dynasty Trade Show. So glad you can join us. Big shout out to Cody Carpenter who joined me last week filling in while Adam was gone. But as you can see, my man is back. The tag team is back together. Billy the Badass Gun, (laughs) the Road Dog Jesse James. We're back. We're back and ready to do some Dynasty Trades. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm good, man. Recharged. Uh, Taking the week off was... A lot harder than you might expect, man. Um, walking away and seeing, I mean, we had the executives on. We had Maddie killing it and you talking. I mean, what a week to take off. You guys talking the quarterback horde after, you know, the whole Stoppa show, um, the viralness on Twitter, right? <laughs> I told you the week before, like before all that happened, I was going to take that week off. And uh, then I see that go on. I see, you know, Cody's killing it. I had the hat on. Love, love to see, um, you know, the guests on the 40 Chess Dynasty you know podcast the trade show everything but i'm i'm glad to be back mike uh it feels good to be back doing it with you you know let's go man you're like cam you're back except for it's not going to end as badly for you as it did for uh, cam Newton, right yeah it's like one game. <laughs> Ho- hopefully my return um to the 40 chess dynasty trade show isn't as bad as cam's return to carolina right so <laughs> with, with that if you do what your deals featured on this show uh, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon a dollar a month get you in the door go to the shithead trades channel post your trade in there um, also check out South Harmon ff.com the warp tool is popping off we just recently Koopa has been putting in tons of work Mike and I don't really play a lot on NFL but a lot of no. people do a lot of people do and we just got NFL integration so if you have the warp tool make sure you check that out for your MFL leagues if you've been waiting to get the warp tool because no MFL Now's your chance to go do that. Um, and lastly, if you don't want to get any of that, um, just go down and hit the like, subscribe button. You know, Tell us, hey, man, I liked it better when the yeah. guy with the hat was on. Um, but <laughs> he, he, here, here we are. Uh, if you could just do that for us for the algo, that's all we ask of you. But, Mike, oh. let's get into it, man. Let's see what let's I go, did. Buddy. Let's see what I did. Ooh. So this one here is spicy because I know your affinity for someone here. But what we're looking at, Mike, mm-hmm. this is a 12-team super flex. It's half PPR, half point tight end premium. It's a best ball start 12. Um, I'm receiving a 25 first, Mike. I'm sending away Tyler Lockett, Juwan Johnson, and a 26 third. So I'm going to ask you um, in a vacuum first, and then we can obviously talk through some of the points. Just in, just in general, knowing best ball and all that, and given the settings you see down there, your thoughts on this trade? I mean, uh, Tyler Lockett and Juwan Johnson, both perfectly good assets for best ball. Mm-hmm. Um, he's giving you a 25 first. This is one of those where like, I guess I understand it from Swish's side because these are both guys I'd like to buy in best ball. Uh, like I'll buy Jawan Johnson just about anywhere just because I think he's dirt cheap and for what he produces, um, I'm not too concerned about like the Foster Moreau signing. <laughs> like at once upon a time, we thought he wasn't playing football for a while and all of a sudden he's signing. So good story. Um, I don't know, man. Jawan Johnson was just actually really good last year. Really, really good. Tyler Lockett, always, always good, man. Always hated on. But if you look at it, at best, man, both these guys are probably seconds in value. If you just look on this on the surface, man, it's two seconds and a third for a future first. And anytime you can do that, like you take the first, even in best ball, you just kind of take it. I, 
I tried to justify the other side, I guess. Um, it's just hard. Why Why do it? Why do it in July? It's July 4th today when we're recording this, Adam. Why? Like, why? What's the need? Like, you can buy these dudes what? for this just Let's... about any time you want. Like, or equivalent type players anytime you want. Like, I'm good. Even if I was a contender, Adam, and you came to me and you're like, hey, I'll give you my 25 first for, for these kind of guys. As much as I'm like, I don't want to break up the contender, I'm just going to go, all right, well, it's July. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with this first later on. <laughs> you know, I'll go buy some other guys. See you, Juwan. Like you. See you, Tyler. I like you. You can have my 26 third if that's really important to you. So, yeah, I like your side. I mean, it's a heady move. I understand it. It's not the worst thing in best ball to do it. It's just I don't understand the timing of it. Like, I'm not making this kind of purchase or pushing my first in right now. And even in 2025, like, I'm not doing it for a couple assets that are, Meh, okay. <laughs> okay. If you if you're, let's say your team was, it's not for this uh, for Switch, by the way. Let, let, let's say this is one of these teams, Mike. You're just absolutely loaded to the T. Right. Would you make a move like this then? No. Not Still now. no. Right. Okay. Cool. So um, I wanted to talk though, Mike, about the dynamics of the league, and sometimes why what you just see and why we like to talk about stuff in in deep context matters. So the reason I think that Switch makes this deal, Mike, is a couple things. One, this league has 11 people that are convinced they're, they're competing. Right. Oh, no. Right? And, and now here's the thing. There's one person. Uh, the first year, I, I kind of decided to rebuild just because I saw that market, right? It's just right. too much value to soak up. Okay. So now there's only one person that's rebuilding, and it's his first time rebuilding, and he's basically dr- like dried up player assets. Like everybody's giving picks and all the stuff to him now, and there's nothing really left to buy from his team that's like you feel good about. Even right. to this level, so what if you if you're trying to compete and throw picks in, there's really only so many buyers. Like I'm 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 contending, but I'm willing to take this pick on because I think I can do something with it later. Um, so I guess that's the reason I do it. I, I will say, Mike, knowing the context of the league, though, like I I still did it and wasn't really all that hesitant. But the problem could be for me, I've acquired five first, right? And like I know there's probably a period of time where I can't move them because people won't value them appropriately. Yes, we've been in leagues like that before, right? Where people just don't want to buy the first. Everybody thinks they're winning this year. Yep. So the one thing I have done, though, is I've basically stacked my quarterback room. I have pretty decent roster construction, so it would take catastrophe to not make the playoffs. And then here's what I do plan on happening. Because 11 people are trying to contend, what do we know? They can't all contend. And I have five picks that aren't my own. Trade deadline in this league? Uh, It is, but it's late. It's like week Right before the playoffs. So the playoff start trade deadline is right before the playoffs start. So it's week 14. Week 14? Okay. Yep. Yep. So it is late. There's going to be people who know they're out of it. By then. Like, it, it may take till last year, the same thing happened. It may take until the very last straw. Like, okay, I officially am out of the playoffs. Okay. Now I'll There's take no your way. picks. But I'm, then... I'm, I'm two games back with one to go. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's now over. I have five first, and you know you need to come get them because you can't go to the playoffs. Like, I may have to play that long of a waiting game. And if for some reason I end up with four 24s and a 25 first, fine, I'll do it. So I don't want to, uh, you know, gloat about it too much. I, I think in best ball, though, multiple pieces do matter. Right. So like you said, they're probably two seconds and then the third. So it's like, does all that change get you a buck? In best ball, you, you could make the argument. But for me, knowing how this team's built, that's the other thing with the simulator, uh, Mike, this is team seven. So right now, not making the playoffs even after this trade. Um, so I'm taking, I'm taking the shot against him. I mean, if you think about it, like change this to 24 and let's go back in time. You're in week 12 and Jawan Johnson's doing what he's doing last year. And Tyler Lockett's doing what he's doing. Like at that point, if you wanted to make that move, cause you're like, Hey man, I'm the number two team in the league. I'm just looking for some pieces here for the playoffs to give me that final <clears> push and best ball. Yeah. Like I'm with it. It's the timing right now that just doesn't make sense. Like there's. I understand the when you talk about like oh the assets are kind of dried up. It just you if you're swisher, you're artificially like forcing this, <laughs> forcing this kind of move when you don't need to. We're yeah. not going to score fantasy points for another couple of months, man. We're just and he, not. And he and he kind of put in the chat. He made like three deals the same day, and he kind of put in the chat like I think you know once you get to the playoffs, anything can happen. He's embracing variance, but I will say. Mike, sometimes when someone is convinced they're going to try to contend and the market's not really letting you move picks around, like they start burning a hole in people's pockets, right? Like right. it's kind of crazy. 
but that happens sometimes. And I saw a couple trades go through and I'm like, I already have his 24, but let me see what the 25 is looking like. Let's, let's, let's see if I can open that up. And here we go. So hell of a bet to make against him too. You can embrace the invariance all you want. And then when that fails, you come back for your pick later. Exactly. Sure so, be cheap. yep. And if, uh, you know, we'll see what, we'll see what kind of pieces I get back for it. Um, how that deal looks 2020. Yeah. All right, Mike, uh, we got our new video editor, Christian, making a deal here. Um, Jamar Chase and the 108, Mike, being acquired for Garrett Wilson and a 2023 105. So it's really Chase and Wilson swap and then the pick swap of 108 and 105. This is a 12-team Superflex lineup, start 10, non-tight end premium. Um, if you wanted to pull up warp at all, it's the game of end zones. So... I think this is one of those because it's position swap that you really don't need to. Um, <laughs> this is pretty awesome by him. <laughs> this is actually, it, this is the weird thing. Jamar Chase is an incredibly valuable asset in Dynasty. But Adam, you and I have both seen the rapid ascension of Garrett Wilson over the last, what, six, seven months? You know, yeah. Ever since. I, and you know, I'm a big guy. I'm a big fan of Wilson. But man, there's there's a point where we've reached the crescendo, you know? Jamar Chase, right, currently right now, scores more fantasy points than Garrett Wilson has. Okay, but it's only been one year for him. People are projecting him as like the next guy, right? The next Jamar Chase, the Correct. next guy in there, right? He's coming. He's going to be dynasty wide receiver three, probably until Marvin Harrison Jr. comes in the league, and then he'll be dynasty wide receiver three without ever doing anything. But Garrett Wilson is right there, and you get to move up three spots, and you get to move up in the rookie draft. Like, let's turn our heads back. But there's still a tier of rookie picks that matter, and the top five is that tier, right? After that, it's yep, okay. Like Addison's fine, QJ's fine, like they're fine. Right, Kincaid, if you're that kind of guy in a tight end premium, like they're fine. There's a difference though. People value JSN extremely high, right? Like after Garrett Wilson, who's the next wide receiver we really start thinking about that's youthful? JSN, Drake London, like those are the guys <laughs> where they're in that tier. So. You, you did a true down tier to really up tier in the rookie draft, which I really like. Because even if I don't like Garrett Wilson, I know the market's there for Garrett Wilson, right? It's not the exact same as Jamar Chase, but let's just think about a world where Garrett Wilson comes out week one with Aaron Rodgers and has, you know, 100 yards and two touchdowns. People will lose their fucking minds. Mike, it's old. I'm it's telling old. you, watch Keep Trade Cut put him, like, right there with J. Jeff. You know, not yeah. not not ahead, but like you know, just right. yeah. the the points in total value, whatever they do it. You know, and he'll be at like nine thousand something, just below him, something Cause crazy. Because he, he'd be the hot new thing. It's the thing everybody wants. Well, because people enough. already are trying to force and project this into like real time things. So then, if you get that happened week one, oh, I'll tell and you what, it'd I, be a good time to have some Garrett Wilson shares. Because my goodness, you could move right. If I think about it, like if I just say the one hundred eight's Quentin Johnston. That's what I was going to say, though. That that's the big that's the big thing here, Mike. Is right. would you rather have Garrett Wilson and probably here, Mike, a shot at either one of those QBs or Gibbs? Right. Even if it isn't Gibbs, right? Let's say it's JSN, right? For us, the wide sure. receiver is the one sure. that falls in these these South Harmon drafts, and he's the one hundred and five. Garrett Wilson and JSN are Chase and, and QJ. I'm taking the Garrett Wilson and Chase side, pretty much independent of league. Just because I know the market's there. That's like those are safe assets to buy. Not that Chase is unsafe, but QJ is the one who's really like that could go either way, right? If you don't right. start at the top as a rookie wide receiver, like people aren't as baked in. It's a what have you done for me lately? People love Traylon Burks, but he also kind of slipped to that part where he was, you know, the 105, the 104, the 106 in rookie drafts last year. And you see it now. He did okay his rookie year. Similar to like what Drake London did, but it's vastly different when you start as the dyna or the rookie wide receiver one of your class. So JSN, even if he really doesn't do anything, is going to hold that insulated value. Yep. If QJ does the same, people are like, eh, I don't really care. Right? Yeah, like, that, that's where whatever. And that's where the bet honestly is. See, th what's I'm going to tell you what's tough about this one for me, really, Mike, is that because here, here's the thing: the 105 to me is. A significant amount better than 108 right yes but when I, then you have to equate the difference in significance between chase and wilson right so in lineup start 10 like you said already like i could pull up warp which i did and it 
it really doesn't matter all that much in, until we start talking about the uh, the picks because the wide receivers like that that lines whatever. If you believe Garrett Wilson's going to ascend into the top tier, doesn't matter really. But I think the thing that I wanted to talk about, Mike, is if Garrett Wilson doesn't like, let's say he looks better even like he's still very good and a sexy asset. But let's say he's you know wide receiver fifteen twenty ish, which is not crazy to to think that could happen right. for the season, right? Right. The difference in him and Jamar Chase is massive in lineup start 10, and that's if that's the case. And I think the hardest part for me here is because 105 to 108 is is so, such a jump. I want the 105 side because I, th- I already think the way it goes, Mike, like Richardson will go, and you know, Bijan's obviously gone. It, I'm either going to get Gibbs, Bryce, or CJ there, right? That's, that's massive in my mind. Now, to your point, you could still take JSN even on the low end of the deal if that's what you took as a wide receiver that's also got insulated value. That's a very, that's a very, uh, especially JSN and Wilson, you know, the Ohio State University on that side. Right. But the the problem is the market of Jamar Chase, I think, is what is making this deal hard for me to grade one way or the other. Because Jamar Chase is just, look what happened last year when he got hurt, right? Like, we're like, oh, how does it feel now? But he missed a few weeks right. and he never dipped in value. And he's just this crazy elite asset. So it, it's tough for me. I think because Garrett Wilson's so highly valued, I, I, I want to lean the baby K side. But in lineup start 10, if you've rostered, uh, constructed appropriately, and Jamar Chase is one of those assets you're willing to pay this price for and you have the depth built up, I can I can understand doing it. In process, though, man, it's hard for me to not want that Garrett Wilson side, honestly, as much as I do know Chase's value is so, so crazy high. It is. It is crazy high. And I talk about it from the fact of like getting like a Gibbs or a JSN at the pick. Heaven forbid they let you – walk into another quarterback in the I've seen it so many times right 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 and if they do like I'm taking the quarterback because you see where they go in startup ADP it, and if you really think about it you're trading your first round startup pick because that's where Chase goes right right and in the 108 I don't know maybe what five, fifth six for QJ somewhere in that ballpark he's, he's like sixth break. round yeah yep. right but the 105 right if that's CJ Stroud if that's Bryce Young like those are second or third round startup picks. So if you told me I could trade a back end first round startup pick and I could get a second and a third round startup pick in return, <laughs> the only thing I got to add as a sweetener is my sixth, Ooh, a one Quentin, and a six. Quentin Johnson, two for the record, three. he's a 505, uh, by okay. the way. And J- Addison's 506. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. But just you see what I'm getting at, though. No, where the point's still the same. I was just right? saying that. Like, right? where, where do those quarterbacks go? And well, the quarterbacks know. go three, 302 is Bryce. And we got let's see. Wow, CJ's down to the four hundred one. Quarterback fade is kind of kind of silly. <laughs> Kylie's at four hundred two. I, I miss a week. That's you miss good. a lot, apparently. I guess. I guess. If, not in the leagues that I'm in with Stapa. I'll I'll take all those quarterbacks. Thank you very much. He must have been. <laughs> he must have been looking at our ADP sheet uh, when he was thinking he was going to get all those guys. He's looking at the one you're looking at right now, going, "Yeah, yeah, they're going to fall." No, uh, but for me, like the quarterback position is always so so valuable in superflex. So heaven forbid they let you you walk into a quarterback and Garrett Wilson. Like I'll take that as a down tier any day of the week from a Jamar Chase and throwing in a QJ or an Addison, no biggie for me. Yeah, um, the one thing I would say, like context wise, to really tell you how I would lean because I think it's really close, is I would love to see the teams. Like if, if you told me that you could really afford this and you believe that Chase is just that super valuable could understand it right. but if you didn't have the depth like if i look at this team and i'm like i don't really i don't know that i want to do this move i think it's close enough to where i could I, it could be dependent based on what his uh his team looks like so um interesting one there I, man up to ch- chase there is just <laughs> even even when i know they're highly valuable it's just hard for me to get a, get behind doing all right mike 12 team super flex start 12 lineup two tight end um you know schumer Speaking of Schumer, he's a he's a wild cat. Um, he's put wild scoring. He says the league is called pigskin fever. Mike, this is apparently one that we got to pull warp up. Yeah. But this is yeah. a start. This is a startup trade, right? And uh, the reason I say we have to pull up warp, Mike, is I want to know how look, wild the scoring is. Look, look at look at the assets being sent on that other side, though. It's a lot. The, no, no context, right? In a lineup league, I'm looking at it and I'm going, <clears throat> you're getting two elite quarterbacks. And, Regardless he had fact, 105 and 106, by the way. So he took Lamar at 105, and he took but, Justin Fields at 106. But regardless of it, you're trading up into that range to get two elite quarterbacks, which is usually a very good strategy to do. And I, we've talked about it, right? 
like I'm willing to send my two, my three, my four, but I'm also looking to get back like, you know, a seven or an eight, you know, somewhere in that range. He got back a 10th, not as good in best ball. I'm much more interested in a 10th rounder than I am in a, a lineup league. Let's be frank about that. It's yeah, not no the question, worst. No question. It's, it's not the worst. It's a hefty price to pay for two, you know, to get that, that second elite quarterback, but more times than not, it pays off. Now we pull up the warp on this one. And wild scoring could mean anything, man. The quarterbacks could be ridiculously high compared to everybody else. Like they could be all over the map. And if that's the case, the price looks even better. Like you just do whatever the hell you have to to get that advantage in a start twelve super flex lineup league of you plugging in two elite options, two top eight options over the field every single week. I don't right. care about the two tight end part. Um, I'm kind of on this screw the tight ends <laughs> like kick unless the scoring is really ridiculous Mike that's why that Juwan Johnson as much as in the first deal I did as much as I love right. him right I have three other tight ends I'm like you know it just I don't need it here even in best ball right 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 pig skin fever I gotta so this here one. Mike I got it pulled up by the way uh go ahead and pull it up and th- this is interesting um I know that there is a heavy points per carry which is why he went with the Lamar and Fields thing right um yep and it, and it makes sense. So last year, Mike, when you look at it, Justin Fields was uh, five in warp at 1.86. To give you an idea, um, that's ahead of Diggs and A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb. He only trailed Adams, Hill, and J. Jeff at the receiver position um, because it also was points per carry, though, Mike. And the, re- the interesting part about getting two, three, and four is there are a lot of very high running back lines seen, you know, right. here. So... Now, obviously, you could try to get some of them later and get values there. Um, but, I mean, Justin Fields scored outrageously high. And if Lamar plays for a full season, um, like we are thinking he very well could with the contract, it, I think it's a risk worth taking. But, man, like there's no names associated at the bottom. But when you think about what you can get in the second, third, and fourth, just let, let, let's try to give some context for people listening, right? So, Mike, like I think there's a scenario where at 208 you can get Dak Prescott. Yep. Right. Yep. At the three, so now you basically tear down from Fields to Dak, and you could pick up in a league like this. You could pick up Jameer Gibbs, and you could pick up, you know, a, a Drake London, a Devontae Adams, a Najee Harris. I mean, hell, you could even get in the fourth round. Sometimes Kyler Murray's staring there in the face, right? right. So like, right. Now, obviously, that's the rosy the rosy look at it. Um, obviously, you get the ten oh six from the thirteen oh eight, but I, I I love getting the two elite quarterbacks. But if you think about what this deal means, Mike, you're not drafting until the fifth round. Yeah, that's where whew, I would love to see the team because I'm already starting to think about it. Right, like you're 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 starting players in this tenth round range that you're getting that pick back, which is probably why that's such a big deal to get that back for him because. You've only picked up by the tenth round six guys. Yeah, I. This one, let me just say this, man. Schumer's our guy, but when we pull up the warp, and, and you're looking at twenty two warp, I also am on this kick where I like to look at multiple historical. Oh, yeah, I do historical too. Historical warp, right? What does so it look like historical? I didn't look at it. Twenty one is a little bit more favorable, right? Twenty two was a bad year for quarterbacks as a whole, besides the guys at the top. But after that, the graph so twenty one, the red good. is a little higher up. The red stays higher up, but also like those elite scorers that we had in 2021 at the other positions, like wide receiver and running back. You remember Cooper Cup being really good, JT being really good. Remember those guys? We oh. may have heard of them before. Who? Yeah. I mean, those guys are on par or better than QBs. You know, QB1. Because right? mm. of the point, because the heavy points per carry, right. good point, right? But, it, but in general, the quarterbacks in the future like they stay above the equivalent of running backs they stay above the equivalent of wide receivers so it's a little bit more favorable right it's just not big enough gap for me to like what you're saying here is a thousand percent correct because when i look at the warp i go man the endless possibilities i don't even have to get elite quarterbacks man i can get by with a kirk cousins i can get by with a dak prescott right <laughs> like if those are my guys plus i got these extra picks like these extra seconds, these extra thirds, these extra fours, <clears throat> to get these running backs in point per carry leagues that people devalue, to get these Saquon Barkleys and these Jonathan Taylors and these Christian McCaffreys, to get these wide receivers that 
aren't as sexy because they're not young, right? The Devontae Adams, the Stephon Diggs, the Tyreeks, if they fall in these rounds. Looking at, man, I actually kind of want the package side. This is one of the weird ones. I know yeah. I got, no, I know. I got I'm with you. when it said wild scoring because of quarterbacks could be ridiculous, right? They could be ridiculously insane. And then mm. I want to pay for them even more. But I look at the graphs and I'm sitting here and I'm going, if I'm on the opposite side, this might be one of those leagues where I go, yeah, go ahead. What a, what a time to plug first. this, man. What a time to plug this. So Scott and I are going to be doing a series, a full crazy long series, probably 24, 26 episodes on – like warp and roster construction. And I think, Mike, here's one of the things that warp has shown me. And it's a little, a lot of the things that has been validating for you and I, right? Like looking at warp, it's like, okay, it makes a lot of sense. But when we miss and when I look at warp, one of the big things is we talked about basically when I would get in a new league, I'm opening up the scoring settings, I'm going to see, and I'm kind of making my own predictions, right? Now, the interesting part about that is that doesn't necessarily like for example that points per carry although you're getting the two two of the high end rushing talent quarterbacks that doesn't necessarily mean that because of that and you know positional scarcity that the quarterbacks are by far and away leaps and bounds worth this type of a price right i think that's one of the things warp actually has shown me is it's not always exactly what you think when you just first look at the scoring settings but here's the thing, Mike, when you put the scoring settings in context with the warp tool and you see the graph, it clicks, right? You start yeah. you start thinking, okay, yeah. this makes sense and this is why. So I, I as much as it, um, you, you may like certain scoring moves, confirm it with warp. I'm telling you, there's a lot of times you may start to realize, oh, this I, I kind of didn't think about this and it makes a lot of sense now why maybe right. all these, these player assets. Because the thing about two, three, and four, Mike, uh, obviously it depends on your league and if you're in it and if I'm in it and how the quarterbacks drop. But if I can get a Dak Prescott in the second, man, like that tear down all of a sudden makes it worth it with this warp, right? And we look at 2021, right. like you said, Dak Prescott, nine in warp, Kirk Cousins, 10 in warp, all pretty much ahead of the majority of the running backs and receivers still. So um, that, 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 that'd be my caveat about that. It's just too many. It's too many high-end assets for me. Listen, I got real experience with it. That startup's going on that was the big controversy, and I traded it up for for two elite quarterbacks. And, yes, there was a QB horde that went on later, but that's probably one of the biggest kicks in the teeth. Like, I got a very good deal to move up to do it, like very fee- uh, reasonable in best ball that didn't hamstring me. Right. But, Adam, if I would have got more aggressive like and actually had to pay the price that it takes like this to move up, I would have been so angry because <clears> – <throat> Even in this draft, right, it's it's a bunch of people that I don't really know. There's a couple patrons in here who listen to us and, you know, some other people in, like Alan Soslowski in the industry. Like there's some smart people in here, but I'm sitting here just furious and irate because Tua Tungvaloa at the 3-3, three, three, Dak Prescott at the 3-4, CJ Stroud at the 3-5. Like, these are the quarterbacks available in the third round, and I had to pay to move up because I'm like, I got to get I gotta get one of these guys. I got to get these. Mike. I need these top 12 quarterbacks, and I'm going, shit, you know, there's a handful of them in the third round. I could have taken Jefferson in the first, got a quarterback in the second, and one in the third, and gone, I got two top 12 quarterbacks, and I got Justin Jefferson. And, and How you awesome know, is this? When you're not drafting with, like, 100% or 80% shitheads, right? Right. Things like that can happen. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating. Knowing who you're drafting with too is a big thing. But you know, you don't necessarily know how they're gonna fall. Um, all right, here you go, Mike. Redwoods, Ryan Edwards, twelve team Superflex best ball start ten. Dynasty best of balls is the league. <laughs> Gotta like that one, right? I had to put that one in scrolling text for everybody. All right, Ryan Edwards is getting Russell Wilson, DPJ, Donovan Peoples Jones, and a 2024 third. Sending away to your boy love to eat. Mike Evans, Jacoby Brissett, and a 2024 second. Mike, I'm just going to say this. Russell Wilson, um, in some in some areas in Dynasty, I have seen just crazy hated on. I mean, th- th- this to me feels like how low do you really value a guy like Russell Wilson for this to get done, Mike? Like think about on the other end too right now. This time of year – Mike Evans is such a hated guy for the most part. <laughs> like he is a guy that I'm constantly almost forced to take in auctions or drafts because people don't want to touch him. Like Jacoby Brissett. This is a guy yeah. that, I mean, listen, I liked what he did in Cleveland while Watson was out, but come on, man. 
long term dynasty? Right. What? Uh, right. Come on, man. I I can't. I, I I got no words, Mike. I'm I'm gonna let you do it. What do you think? Like a reasonable expectation for Russ to finish this year? Like reasonable. Warp, uh, like points per game scoring. What are we talking? Just in general, like if I told you he finishes as QB sixteen, is that crazy? No, I think that's well okay. within reason. Right. Looking at warp for this league, and we just kind of touched on this the last one. So the mm-hmm. warp for the league, twenty twenty two was a bad year generally in every league that you look at for <laughs> for quarterback warp. Like it was down because right. of so many injuries. Right, we had a ton of injuries. Even in the 2022 graph, Adam, quarterback down to QB 19 is more valuable and warped than the equal position player across the board. So it, it's just, it's crazy. I, I didn't so even get to that, the warp. So I'm glad you said that. That's the way of saying in a best ball start 10, Adam, like a best ball, a super flex best ball start 10 with this warp the way it is. Even if you project Russ as QB 19, he's infinitely the same value. Minus the positional scarcity as well. Like that factors in too. But if you take that part out, he's more valuable than wide receiver 19. Do you reasonably <clears throat> expect Mike Evans to finish as wide receiver 19 next year? And the answer is no. I don't think I, anybody shouldn't. Could, could he? Yeah, but I, maybe. With the new quarterback situation, I'm not projecting right. it. Mike, to, to give context to that too, to uh, kind of piggyback off of a similar trade we just talked about. Last year, Mike. Wide receiver 18 in warp in this league was Garrett Wilson. 0.83. All right, now to give you context, Jimmy G was higher in warp than Garrett Wilson last year in this league. Right. And he barely played. I mean, dude. <laughs> he got injured. Played only a handful of games. I mean, I wouldn't like what, say barely played. What, but is, he only what played is the worst? Let, let's talk about this for a second because – that was that was last year was by far and away Russ's worst showing we've ever seen. Rock bottom Russ last year. Rock there, bottom Russ. I like, look at that man. Uh, <laughs> too bad I already made the thumbnail because we have a quick turnaround on this. I'd put it as Russ, but um, Mike, like I'm curious for people what they think. Now, we can talk about you and I because we're on the show. Right. Like, what do you really think? Because the 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 fade and the hate has gotten so crazy. What do you think – like, how much lower do you think he can really get to for this type of stuff to be happening in leagues? Yeah. Like, he, last year in this league, he was, he was 20th in warp. Like, there's a scenario that it's way better than this. Right. I mean – You're talking it, about it. Mike Evans – Is it possible he's better receiver. than Derek Carr last year? Absolutely. <laughs> Mike Evans was wide receiver 20 in warp last year with Tom Brady throwing the football 700 and how many times, right? Tom unless Brady. You, unless you uh, are a big uh, Baker or Kyle Trask truther, good luck with that one. And you have to hope that the volume stays at 750-something. And if you're a coach who lets Baker them throw the ball 750 times, that was easy for the rest side. Easy. I'll take that all day. I mean, that was criminal, honestly. Uh, Ryan, you might want to yeah. be like me, take a week <laughs> off, hide, hide yeah. out. Um <laughs> They're coming for you. Yeah. All right, TK. Uh, we got a bunch of new patrons in here, Mike. Got to get their deals in. Speaking of Jimmy G, Jimmy G, Justin Jefferson, Khalil Herbert, twelve team Superflex PPR start nine lineup league. Uh, TK is acquiring. So that that other side sending away Kenneth Walker, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Mike's beloved Brock Purdy, couple seconds twenty four and twenty five, and a twenty twenty four third. Um, interestingly, he's getting his 24 second back, but Mike, what say you here? Um, I actually reached out to the guy or uh, girl TK didn't get feedback. I would love to have seen the warp on this, but we'll just have to talk from this generic lineup. Start nine PPR. What do you think? You're getting the number one wide receiver in warp in a start nine. And mm-hmm. it's not particularly close, no matter kind of what league settings you look at, right? right? If it's, you know, half PPR, full PPR, 1.5 PPR, <laughs> tiered PPR, doesn't matter. Nah, if it's it PPR, Justin Jefferson catches a lot of passes, he catches, a, gets a lot of yards, and he scores a lot of touchdowns. Uh, right. The number one wide receiver, and it's not close. Not no particularly people. close. People the love only, when I say that. <laughs> I love the – well, Mike, here, here's the thing. The only way I could see where you would take this other side is, one, there's got to be a first coming back. Now, the seconds ain't getting it done with the player's caliber of J. Jeffs. 
first and foremost. Yeah. Let's start there. And then you would have to tell me it's like when we look at warp, running backs are sky high. And you're feeling like I'm just getting Kenneth Walker really cheap. Um, but I don't think you're getting him that cheap when you send away Justin Jefferson. And I like Amon Ross St. Brown quite a bit, Mike. But the difference we have to acknowledge, right, especially like when we were talking Chase and, and Wilson, not just in what they could become, but in market, there's a big gap. Amon Ross St. Brown is just not in the threshold range of like nuclear value, as is J. Jeff, man. It's just not. Listen, you and I love Amon Ra, right? Right. Okay. But – how many times, and, and you guys saw this last week, if you watch Cody or, or watch me and Maddie on the AMA, like we get an Amon Ra question or we have a guest yeah. and we have somebody new on. What yeah. do we always ask them? Like when Amon Ra, like are you in on Amon Ra? Like where are you at with Amon Ra? Like, and I love to hear when they're like, I love Amon Ra, I'm in on him. No, nope, we never have to fucking ask them if they're in on Justin Jefferson. Hey, man, Co- Cody, listen, I know this is, this is a tough question to ask. Like where do you stand on Justin Jefferson? Like do you <laughs> – do you think yeah. he's that good? Is he kind of just playing above, <laughs> like he's out of his mind? Come on, man! Like, like am I crazy for for ranking Justin Jefferson in the, in the top the top twelve? <laughs> like, we don't have to ask those questions. So Do you think his draft capital is going to get in the way? Is there problems with a JMO? Listen, if that was a start twelve, start thirteen, like you can make a case for the tear down to Amon Ra if you still really believe in Kenneth Walker, the quarterback swap, who gave a shit, and he got some seconds on top, like. That that was fine. Uh, but in a start nine, man, when I'm just trying to pack as many studs into a lineup league as possible, like you right. need J-Jets. Look, yeah, let's well, go. I think even – I think all the way around I'm taking that other side. But to your point, and, and, and truthfully, Mike, for that other scenario, like a long starting lineup and, and right. lineup, th- you know what has to happen is Purdy has to take the job back and really become – a yeah. outlier outlier for that to even it, be close his, his elbow has to be good right like oh, he has to be the it has first to be quarterback great. to overcome this kind of UCL. it has to be not just good it has to be great all right, right mike so let's get into it um smig so smig zero zero i was looking just scrolling through today apparently smig's been in the discord for a while and he put this big long post finally my first post into uh the shithead trades channel all excited gave context all that stuff so i figured we got to talk about it oh brandon Ayuk in a 2024 first mike um we really don't need all the context frankly but we'll talk about this anyway uh hayden hurst kenny pickett roshan johnson 2024 third 12 team super flex ppr start 11 uh half point tight end premium duck duck dynasty mike is the the warp I'm going to let you kind of kick this start of this one off, and then I'll, I'll clean it up. You can start this off, and, and people probably hate this. I love Brandon Ayuk, but I also do really like Kenny Pickett. And in any kind of super flex. And we've been on him from a minute, right? If it's any time of super flex, right? Adam, if I told you straight up, though, is it hot take if you're going to say in a super flex league, I'd just rather have Kenny Pickett? Not that I don't like Brandon Mm-mm. Ayuk, but no. I'm, shoot, I'm shooting no. the moon all the time on quarterback. Like, it's so hard to get these guys, even the average guys sometimes, it's like pulling teeth. I would, it's a conversation. Now, I would say this in a, in a, in a, in, without knowing warp, just like standard context, I would say yes. Now, warp can obviously change that league to league, but yes, in standard context, Quarterback over the receiver um, of 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 Ayuk's caliber, and I love Ayuk, but yes, uh, Brandon Ayuk last year. So I pulled it up because we, I'll talk in the vacuum, then I'll talk about the war. But I will yep. say I rather Kenny Pickett over Brandon Ayuk, mm-hmm. just because it's a quarterback. Now, sure, of course, a twenty four first or Hayden Hurst, Roshan. I, I, I like Roshan, man, but it's, maybe I'll maybe the third maybe the third gets you there, right? I'll package a bunch of junk with Roshan if that's what you really want to get to that first all day. Like you can have the third, you can have Hayden Hurst. I got a Hunter Long laying around. You want some Denzel Mims? Uh, maybe there's a Ceh in the back. Let me go check with the manager. Let me go look in the back. Yeah, we do got a yeah, Ceh. I got to like get it from. C- I got it. takes a day. I just got to get it from waivers, but it'll be here tomorrow. Like I'll package all the junk you want with Roshan to get your first. So that part he had, he killed it, smashed it out of the park. Now, stupid, on, stupid, on man. The, on the warp context, this is something to say. Where Brandon Ayuk was, <laughs> he had a good year last year. Wide receiver 21. And in this league, he's actually a 1.09 warp. Right. He's above the quarterback 21. That's what is- I was getting ready to say is sometimes knowing your league too and running the warp, this is actually an edge, man. I'm telling you, lead the league. Right. If you play, I, I would say, Mike, if you play in at least three leagues, 
you'd be shocked. Unless you play in just vanilla, boring-ass leagues with no scoring differences. It's just PPR, right. nothing, start 10, all the same. Warp Tool shows you so much stuff. Mike, that's the this, crazy this, part. This, that's this the crazy me, part. This tells me when I looked at it, I'm like, okay, the Kenny Pickett side I'd rather have. So shout out to Pickle Dickens, right, for, for being smart and getting the quarterback. But I pull up the league and I look at the warp and I go, ain't no fucking way, man. Ain't no way. Because I project Kenny Pickett. We just talked about, like, do you think Russ could be QB19? Shit, I hope Kenny Pickett's QB19. I'll take it. I'll, if, if Kenny Pickett is QB16, like you said, left. I'll take it, baby. Uh, and, it, and the biggest point about this whole thing, to tie it, to put a bow on it, is when I have those edges and warp, right, and I see a team willing to take all that stuff, you're damn right that's the team I want to bet against. You're <laughs> damn funny. right that I want that Pickle Dickens first. I love my Pickle Dickens first. Shit, we didn't even plug this league into the league simulator. Pickle Dickens could be horrible too. Right? This would be I want, in top five pick, top four pick. First week back on the shit show, 4D Chess Dynasty Trade Show, I want my Pickle Dickens, man. Give me that. Um, all right. So uh, new, new, new member, uh, Jay Kink. Getting Ty Montgomery and George Kittle, Mike. By the way, uh, we have short turnaround time. We're recording this Tuesday, then we're going straight into AMA. I'm going to have to edit this in a hurry, get it out for you Wednesday. George Kittle's the thumbnail, just because uh, we haven't had a lot of deals with him included. Sending away to receive Kittle, Brock Purdy, Sky Moore, 2024 third. It's a 14 team super flex, 0.75 PPR, 0.75 tight end premium. Lineup start 11. The league on sleeper, Mike, is Grandma League. Um,. Curious your thoughts. Mute. I get it. didn't really matter. I was thinking in my head and doing the thing where I flip flop back and forth. <laughs> Sky Moore, Brock Purdy, you know, I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, I don't care. And this, this is my battle I have because I, I don't really care about tight end anymore. I don't, but I got to start one in most leagues. And in 14 team leagues, like they're so scarce on the guys that you push the button on. Best ball, you throw a bunch of shit at the wall, and I could talk that good nonsense, that good body talk about mm -hmm. oh, just draft four or five of these guys. Mm -hmm. But we've been in that situation, Adam. You and I have had leagues like that where you go, like, who the hell am I starting this week? Right? We had a billion questions last year. Greg Dolchich was doing well, and every week we had a question: Should I start Dolchich this week? Here are my options. Or should I start Bellinger or Otten or this other rookie? <laughs> I mean, well, I like this matchup, or I like this matchup. It's so tough you got george kittle in a 14 team super flex tight end premium league you just push the listen every single it's a simple it's a simple math equation no. if george kittle is suiting up way. we're putting george kittle in at tight end period you you wait for the game day inactives and as long as he ain't on the list you push the button he's in your lineup so and if and yeah. if for somehow you have andrews or kelsey you're flexing one of the other ones like there's just that's the only scenarios we we talked to about Brock Purdy. I don't have an affinity for Brock Purdy. If he does play with a busted ass elbow, like back end QB two is being nice. <laughs> like, let's be honest. For me, I'm going like this is like one of those guys in that 25 to 36 range that I really don't give a shit about personally. But, and Mike, to this but, league, can I talk about that for a second? Because 18 is the cutoff. Even though now here's the thing, right? The scarcity is a real thing in 14 team, right? right. So. Even if we hate Purdy, like there's just having quarterback bodies right. now. Right. But the thing in Warp, though, what's is interesting, quarterback 18 is the last the last point on the chart where you'd rather have the quarterback over the tight end, even. Like it goes, Mike. When it gets down to those the back end 24, like, for example, quarterback 24 right. versus the the top 10 tight ends, you you want the tight ends, like the quarterback sh the the curve. The graph, yeah. it goes down in a hurry because of the way the scoring set up here. Like if you just look last year, George Kittle, 1.42, right? Tied mm -hmm. in four in this league. Yep. Uh, Russ, who we've talked about earlier, QB, QB 19. 19, Adam. Right. 1.19. That's my point. That that right. That's my point is understanding the warp on that. Yes. Yeah, like give me the George Kittle side here pretty easily. <laughs> yep. This is coming from the guy who's had the uh, the revelation that I don't care about tight ends. Uh, <clears throat> and this deal, I do. You can have this junk if it gets me George Kittle. The, the hard part about it, though, Mike, is this. like, It's not that hard for me. But I, I think when you make a deal like this, a lot of people really struggle in 14-team 
really, really struggle to not get a quarterback back. Right. Even if it's junky, Kyle Trask, something like it. When you don't get one back in 14 team, you kind of subjectify yourself to like, okay, what if I get an injury? Like, do I, am I okay? Because you don't want to put George Kittle in a super flex spot, even if, um, yeah, there you go. I like that. I like that. Uh, th- there's Iowa, man. I knew Mike would, would have to side with the George Kittle side just because we got hey man, it's a hot Iowa driver. versus Iowa Let's State. Cycle. Yeah. <laughs> I set it up right. You know, we had to, we had to get out of here on the right note. We're back. Um, Mike, only pulled seven deals. We wanted to get it quicker um, to you. We have a little we more never, editing we never to go do. Quick. <laughs> we never but go quick. we still got it. You know, we're we're forty five minutes. Seven seven deals for us is like and that's like lightning work, we're right? Speeding. That was yeah. We're speeding like I'm speeding in my new Mustang. I was gonna say it's like it's basically like when you're you know every man I feel like when you look at your ways or your Google Maps yeah. you see an ETA. You're determined I'm going to beat that time. You know, that's the what we were trying to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> competition. I'm going to beat this. That was good to have you back, buddy. Uh, Cody did a great job filling in. Uh, it Killed was so it. great to get to chop him up. But uh, th- this is the roots, man. This is us. This is us. I think that was a sitcom, wasn't it? Like this NBC is us. Or yeah. It, I never uh, watched it, but I think it was. <laughs> yeah, it, was it was like it was very Hallmark-like, you know? Oh, okay. Well, you, no wonder I didn't watch it. Maybe yeah. my wife did. No, it was, it was based on like a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers stuff. Uh, my wife made me watch it with her, but uh, we can rock with I'm, this as us. Just it's you just know it's a little soft, you know. For um, I was probably too busy watching like Sons of Anarchy or something like that. Yeah, which I'll, I'll, we can stick. I'm to very that. sad. I'm very sad, man. I was only a couple episodes left in the uh, the Mayans, the spinoff of the Sons <laughs> of Anarchy. There's only a couple episodes left, and then they're done. They're I know, done. man. I know. I'm sad. Sad man, but it's good to have you back. Good to Absolutely, talk to the man. people again about the trades. What did you think uh, about the trades today? They were good. They were good. Warp is a is a game changer. I know it's it's our tool, uh, developed by Koopa. It's our website, but I mean, we talked to smart people, right? We talked to smart people about it. We didn't even come up with it, right? Like I got this idea from Scott Connor, and it's just the way it came together and we got implemented. And Scott was right way back when. Like, there is a good purpose for this. There is a good reason to look at it, and it has changed the way I play Dynasty. There's not a lot of things along my timeline where, you know, I can listen to a podcast and I can take maybe a nugget or two here. And there's some of those where I go, these guys are nuts. I'm never doing that. I'm never. Yep. Like, I got player takes. I don't like Brock Purdy. I'm never trading a second for him. Get out of here. I'll sell him for a third. Yep. But when I discovered Warp and we actually got to see it, Koopa got to sit down and explain it to us, and I have the time just to sit there at work on my phone in the shitter, right at home, just when I'm I plug a league in and I go, holy hell, you know, Brandon, are you yeah, more valuable than what I project like Kenny Pickett to be? What? Shit. Like even if Kenny Pickett hits what I think he could, I'd want Ayuk, right? Like even if that's I'm being the point, Rosie. That's the thing, and, and this Warp never ceases to amaze me. And the best part about it, I've talked about it on a previous show, is the fact I can go look at historical data just right. to see if 2022 was a one-off, right? Yep. Okay, quarterbacks were bad. What did yep. they look like in 21? Holy shit. Like, 21, they were amazing. 20, they Holy were amazing. Santa 19, Claus they shit. were amazing. I've, do- I've done that, too. The historical sometimes is like, okay, we are really looking at a real thing here. It's not just a one-off year. And then you can, then you can actually play that against the market. Which really, Mike, is the key. And when you can utilize that as the biggest outlier and you can identify the outlier and play it against the market, that's a that's huge in trading. So um, actually, you know, a good a good thing to plug. Um, Scott and I are gonna be doing a new series. You won't get it for a while. We're gonna do the whole thing. Put it out as a standalone product on the South Harmon FF website. Dynasty Mind Warp. Uh, we're gonna be doing a whole roster construction combined with warp and it's going to go from the start of the intro to warp all the way through all the different type of formats ways to look at warp how we were going to identify it how we utilize it in best ball and lineup if you are into the warp tool if you like it this is going to be something you don't want to miss and i'm telling you there's nothing on the market in any space that i've even come close to i mean we're, we're some of the few people talking about warp in general now some of the people do but this type of a series is going to be something that you won't find anywhere else. So if you're interested in that, I would suggest checking that out. It's probably going to take us three to four weeks to get through it all. But before the season starts, you'll have that um, as an additional tool if you're interested in that course. 
Um, aside from that, man, I'm happy to be back. Uh, you guys killed it last week, by the way. Um, absolutely murdered it. Cody, Matty Kiwum, our guys, love having them. Can't wait to see them at the expo. Um, if you do want your deals featured on the show, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. A dollar a month gets you in the door. You could be like some of these, you know, ladies and gentlemen, putting their trades out there, gloating. They get the George Kittle side over Purdy and flexing on everybody. If you do want to join that, also tons of great discourse in there, people talking all the time. Um, also, SouthHarmonFF.com, already mentioned, if you want the warp tool. And lastly, if you don't want any of that stuff, add on, I'm not giving you a, a cent. Give me at least, you know, a penny for your thoughts. Go down and hit the hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Just pretend that you care a little right. bit, right? That's it. That's all we That's ask. It. That's all we it's ask, man. Well, thank you. Well, I like this. Good job, yeah. guys. I listened Even to this. Like it. Just yeah. Like it. I listened to the whole 50 minutes of this. All right, you guys are terrible, but just because I did it, I'm gonna hit the like, and subscribe. <laughs> but that's all we got, man. We appreciate everyone tapping in. We will see you back here, same time, same place, midweek next week for the Dynasty Trade Show. Right as thing. Peace. Peace.